G'day, I'm Kate Growruck. How are you? Today I am chatting about my Z Pax Duplex tent. Uh, it's an ultralight tent, it weighs about 600 grams, and you use your hiking poles or trekking poles to pitch it. I'll do a bit of an overview today of sort of um, what I do like, what I don't like about it, a few of the specs, give you a good look around the tent, and some tips and tricks on how to pitch it in different conditions and get the most out of your tent. I really love this guy. I bought it all with my own money. I'm absolutely not sponsored to do this. I just love chatting about cool gear. All right, let's check it out. There's so much to love about this duplex tent. It's huge, it's lightweight, about 600 grams, and it's brilliant for solo hiking and for two people. It's got um, openings on both sides so you can easily get in and out. It has the feel of tarp camping with the bug net included, so that's really great for me because I do love tarp camping. I feel really connected with nature. The other cool thing is it uses my hiking poles to set up, so you're not carrying additional weight that you don't need to be carrying. And it's pretty darn hardy for a tent that looks like a plastic bag. Um, I was originally pretty worried about taking it off track and camping on rocky platforms and things like that and scratching the bottom, but so far it's been just so impressive. This Dyneema fabric is just amazingly strong and amazingly light. A couple of things that I don't love about it, um, well, I'm still, the jury's out I guess, is this rainbow doors. And so once you um, unzip those, the door hangs down onto the ground. And if you're in a muddy site or a sandy site, you're often dragging a lot of stuff in with that flap. The pole also is in the center there, which some people don't like. The um, Dan Durston tent that I did a review on, they've moved the pole to the sides. The other thing is because it's a single wall tent, you cannot just pitch the fly and uh, do some stargazing. So that's a little bit of a downside, but for me, it makes up for it with these huge openings. You can still look out when you're in bed. And the other thing I love about it is when you're pitching it in the rain, like today, uh, you just basically, what I do is unfold it, throw my gear in, and then it's all protected. You're not like pitching in the rain and getting buckets of water sitting in that tub floor while you're trying to put the tarp over. For the setup, you're gonna need eight pegs. So I haven't included the peg weight in that um, 600 grams. I haven't included the pole weight because I'm gonna be taking those anyway. I'll flash up on the screen how much my pegs weigh. Obviously you can go totally crazy with your pegs and get titanium fancy fancy stuff. But the one thing I will say, you need pretty darn good um, pegs for these ones that hold up your um, pole. So you need at least two mad skills, strong pegs. I've just used some um, MSR darts. Eight pegs, two poles, pitched at 122 centimeters. Uh, if it's super windy, I like to bring them down to about 110 so you can try and pitch the tent a little bit lower and tighter to the ground. One of the big reasons I love this tent is because on a nice rainy day like today, you can set it up without getting all the insides wet. On a conventional structure where you set up the fly and then the rain cover, um, I've had on rainy days just pelted in there and the whole base of the tent gets wet. So I'll show you one of my tips of how I love setting it up. What I'll do here is I'll chuck my stuff straight in the tent even before I pitch it. So it's sitting in there nice and safe. And so this tarp area keeps him perfect. I've mucked around with a few different ways of setting it up. And the best one that I've found is a guy called Follow Bigfoot on YouTube. And he has this cool method. It's a little bit different to the Z-Pack's recommended method, but for me, it gets me a perfect pitch pretty much every time. I'm not gonna try and smash it out super quick today. Uh, I'll just talk you through it. So you do two on this side. One. And two. Then you chuck the opposite pole in. So these are two, 122 centimeters is the main way. And so there's just a little cone bit in there, whack him in, pitch it up. 
Don't be scared to sort of reef on the fabric. It's pretty darn strong. And your second pole. Just tuck it in there. Bingo. Sweet as. Gives it nice and tight. And then I do the other two pegs. Bingo. Bring the grass here. That's what it does. Piece of cake. Then you can tighten things a bit if you want. This thing's really cool. Let's clip these on. Little toggle. Sweet as. <laughs> Bingo. So I've got it pitched pretty high here. I could bring it down a bit. So the other thing you can do here is pop these guys out. Sometimes I don't even bother, but you can just give a bit more headroom. A great little hack that I found for getting even more headroom is to just grab a stick and jab it in there and peg it out, and that pulls pulls the tent out a little bit more so you get just this little bit extra headroom. Another little trick I've kind of learned the hard way is that these two little Z-Pack signs here, Z-Pack and Z-Pack, you face those into the wind and that'll make it nice and aerodynamic and so the wind will come off this storm door and around and you'll not get it coming inside. If you pitch it, uh, if you pitch this side into the wind, the wind will come in here and catch in your storm door. Um, but the cool way they've actually structured it is with the four storm doors. Even if it is windy and rainy, you can have this door shut because it will protect you and you can keep this guy open so you can, you know, get all that fresh air. So to undo your doors, they've got these beautiful little clips that are super simple. There's a, there's a toggle and then a little clip. And then you can just roll them back. And you just flick that on, flick that off. So the other thing I love about this is the different storm door configurations. So this is all four open. So you really do just feel like it's tarp camping. So if the wind really picks up, whack down the two sides that are facing into the wind then if your rain starts battering around we might want to think about closing another one and when she gets crazy gnarly just lock her all down This little gap here will keep you nice and ventilated. You can, if it's bucketing down, splashing off the ground, shooting in, lower your, um, lower your poles about 110, pull these down a bit tighter so you can get it really close to the ground. All right, so the rain's kicked off again, um, but what I've done here is I've, I've shut most of the storm doors, but I've left this one open, and then I've got a nice sort of dry workspace here, lots of ventilation, so it's not dangerous to sort of have a little cook up. <laughs> oh, there's nothing like the sound of rain on the roof. So beautiful. You need to be pretty careful when cooking in a tent because some of these materials are super flammable. It also releases carbon monoxide, which is deadly to humans, so <laughs> you absolutely need to be careful. It's an odorless gas. Cheers. <sighs> Rightio, let's show you some more of this tent.
hello from inside the tent. So it's uh, bucketing down a bit here. But I thought, what better time to chat about the inside of the tent and how much room I have in here. So I wouldn't be upset at all on a long trail if I was stuck in here for an Arvo, sort of, I don't know, <laughs> chilling out, making coffees, chatting with friends. There really is so much room in here. I hope you can sort of represent it. It's always a bit hard to show inside a tent. It's a pretty darn expensive tent and that will make it not for everyone. You can get the duplex, the blue, the white and the orange, I think costs about 650 US dollars. I opted to get the spruce green <laughs> um, just because it was a little bit of a thicker fab fabric. Uh, and I thought, oh, cause I'm going some pretty crazy off track Australian wilderness areas. I didn't want, you know, branches and foliage scratching the heck out of it and having a, a bit of a failure out in the field. And so the spruce green, the slightly thicker fabric, I think was 699 US dollars. Depending on the exchange rate in the US, be really careful if you're buying it here in Australia. If you buy over a thousand dollars worth of goods, there's some weird tax, import tax that gets thrown on it. So I bought a couple of other little bits and bobs. I bought um, a little z -Pax pouch and a, a cute little t-shirt uh, and I made sure it just, just stayed under. Thankfully the exchange rate was really good. Just stayed under a thousand dollars Australian. The standard duplex weighs 530 grams, but this one in the slightly thicker fabric weighs 601 is what they say on their website. I'll put it on the scales in a sec. Um, I think mine was 610 on the scale, which included the stuff sack and the repair tape that comes with it. So this fabric is pretty mad. This stuff is Dyneema fabric, and I think they used to call it Cuban fiber. Um, the standard models come in 0.55 uh, Dyneema fabric, which means how many threads per square inch or something. Uh, and this one is 0.75, so it's slightly thicker. The floor is um, 1.0, so thicker again. The Z-Pax brand uh, say that you do not need to use a ground sheet, and I haven't as yet, and I've pitched on some pretty crazy places like rocky ledges, uh, rocky creek beds. Uh, I've used the big rock, little rock method pitch there. Uh, the other cool thing about this tent is it's a pole. Um, it uses your hiking poles as the structure of the tent and I really love that. I love using a multi-use item and not having to carry something just for that one purpose. So I hike with them and then they pitch my tent in the evening. This, this style of tent can come, you can buy a flex kit that um, is basically the structure for it. But at that sort of point, it starts to get pretty heavy, gets, getting around 830 grams. There might be a better tent on the market, in my opinion, if you're gonna go with the flex kit, if you're worried about that free sanding method. But as I said, I've pitched it on rock ledges with, you know, you can't get a single peg, peg in just using that big rock, little me rock method. And it's, it's been brilliant. The Dyneema fabrics are super high strength to weight ratio. And that's what gives this tent the 600 grams is just mind boggling. The other thing is it's a single layer tent and I have in the past had issues with single layer tent and condensation but there's a few things they do here there's nice ventilation coming in there's this little sort of latch here so if you did happen to create condensation inside the tent it'll run down and drip out through this little um, net that they've set up there if you if you've got it pitched right you've just got to be a bit careful with how you pitch it the other cool things about Dyneema is it's chemical free. Some of those crazy tents that they're making these days have this weird chemical warning and I'm, I'm not quite sure what that's about, but it's nice to know that there's no um, chemical risks involved with the, the smell uh, of these tents. And they're also very water resistant and stretch free. So you'll pitch it and then it shouldn't during the night sag unless something happens with one of your pegs. The other thing I love about these tents, and it just blows my mind um, that <laughs> some other tents don't, it comes fully seam sealed. And so <laughs> my mate the other day bought a tent and he had to spend hours sealing all the seams himself. And, you know, having not been an expert at that either, he was a bit worried that, you know, maybe he hadn't done it correctly. So, I mean, if I'm buying a tent, I want it fully, <laughs> fully seam sealed. So that's another huge bonus. So I'll do a bit of um, measurements here. I've brought my trusty tape measure. They call this an eight centimetre deep bathtub floor, but geez, by my measurements, about 16 centimetres. So that's kind of cool. You could be sitting, this, this ground is pretty wet. You could be sitting almost on like a little river uh, and you should stay dry as long as your, your bathtub floor stays nice and set up. 
eight centimeters. The other cool thing is the width of this guy. It's a full rectangle. Other two-person tents that I've had in ultralight, they, they taper towards the foot and so you're sort of, you know, kicking each other in the night if, if you are sharing it. So that's the other thing I love about this tent. I love solo hiking with it, but I also love sharing it with Elsie. The two doors are beautiful, so I can get out one side, she can get out the other. There's no sort of crawling over each other in the night and waking each other up. But yeah, I love it mostly as a solo tent. So width she is. So this is this says uh, one, 115 centimeters, and I think my notes say 114, so that's pretty cool. Length, let's have a squeeze. Length they advertise 2.3, and as I've got it set up, it's about 2.2 by my standards. But I guess I've got it all a bit loose. You could push a little bit more. At the moment, my air mattress is touching the edge, and at the bottom, after below the air mattress there's another 50 centimeters there so if you are sharing and you don't want to put your stuff outside in the in the vestibule there is 50 centimeters of room there so you could perhaps um, you know slide your mat in the middle put a bit at the end put a bit at the top so there's just so much room in here and that's what I love I'll show you so that's with my mat fully towards the end and you, once again you probably wouldn't sleep that close you'd probably bring it back about there um, and I've got those stick with a slight extension giving you a little bit more headroom there but then, yeah, all the way through, and then you've got a nice chunk of space here um, to store some bits and bobs, your shoes perhaps, if you don't want to have them out in the vestibule and getting spiders and things. And this is what I really love about this tent, is when I'm using it solo, I've got so much space for my sleeping gear, but then also all my gear can come inside with me. And I just like to know, you know, like no possum's going to steal any of my stuff in the middle of the night. For me, it feels a lot like tarp camping. It gives me all that fresh beautiful connection with nature with this just this beautiful fully sealed no mosquitoes are going to get me feel and and you know there have been complaints about how clear this fabric is but how nice is it in here it's a, it's a gloomy dry, like rainy day sort of midday but I'm still getting some nice light in here and I, I actually quite like that the only things you really need to be careful with when you're setting it up is to make sure that your bathtub is sitting inside so this sort of tarp area so the water drains off that way and then also if you get condensation it drains down into this netted area and not onto your, your sleeping bag <laughs> the other joy of the rainbow the the huge rainbow door is that it's just really easy to get in and out of the tent the one exception of that is they've put the pole right in the center and that's just a structural thing um, but i know with like the durston tent they somehow offset that a bit so it wasn't as front and center but you know i don't actually find it that difficult to, this is still a really big hole um, so for me it's not an issue for some people i think it would be the height is so brilliant here and so you really do have a lot of sort of head movements so the height here in the center where there's a little bit of a, a dip based on the the movement it's 103 centimeters and then this guy we've got yeah we're sitting about 120 so I'm gonna trust the tape measure again and basically let's have a look we've got about to the edge is about 55 centimeters space in the vestibule and then it's sort of nice and long but obviously it narrows to where you are let's say 130 centimeters so you can easily fit a pack there nice and dry overnight not that i'm a huge fan of pockets but yeah just to show you everything it's got these two little pockets right near the rainbow door so they are kind of handy if you put you know your head torch in that you can access it easily from the outside or the inside of the tank when it's packed up it's about 13 by 13 by about 25 and i think that's about uh, 8.5 litres in size and it does take up a fair chunk of room but um, I'm able to carry that so <laughs> I mean the, the weight's so low you know just feeling this fabric it looks like a garbage bag but it feels so strong it's really impressive uh, Z-Packs have a two-year warranty with it from any manufacturing um, faults and then they reckon you can do about 4,000 k's hike in this so you know this should sort of last me a many many a year